Hey everybody, how you doing? Into Weapons back again with you. Wanted to do a video today on a new bayonet that arrived in the mail the other day. Uh, this one's coming from Kvar.com and it ran right about $90, which I know a lot of you are thinking, geez, that's expensive for a bayonet, but uh, these are becoming harder to find and they're not as um, common as a regular AK-47 bayonet from, let's say, Romania or Russia or uh, East Germany, things of that nature. So uh, this one's coming right from Bulgaria at the Arsenal factory, and it does have the factory 10 symbol on there, which designates that with the double circle around it. Uh, so the, the bayonet has that as well as the um, scabbard. And uh, both items, the bayonet and the scabbard, do not have any type of serial numbers on there, so um, you really don't know if they were meant to be together or not. But I'm assuming they were, being that it was made and manufactured in Bulgaria um, at the arsenal there. These are pretty modern products. These aren't, haven't been sitting in our uh, military surplus forever. Um, but like I said, they are getting harder to find, so... Uh, if you're if you're needing one for your rifle, this is definitely the time to buy it, as uh, the the quantities have uh, dwindled down, and I believe Arsenal is no longer making these particular bayonets. So, uh, but for ninety dollars, it's definitely an investment, that's for sure. Uh, the reason I purchased this was so I could put it on my uh, Bulgarian SLR 101S. Uh, it has the bayonet lug on here, which a lot of rifles that are imported into the states do not have. Uh, I tried a couple of my Yugo and Romanian bayonets on here, and they did not fit the lock. Uh, the locking uh, nut on here would not uh, fully seat, so uh, I tried to, you know, go ahead and give this one a whirl and see if it would work, and indeed it does. Uh, overall, it's a pretty nice bayonet. It does have a, a plastic or polymer type handle. It's not bakelite and it's not metal, so uh, but it is pretty solid. It's, it's got a nice design. It almost looks like it was a mold. Um, it's got the, the clip in here the back to lock into the bayonet lug. Um, it's got the um, ring around here to lock into your muzzle uh, brake in the front there. And that seems to be working pretty well with the muzzle brake I have on there currently. Uh, the one interesting, interesting thing about this particular bayonet is the uh, finish of the blade itself. It's actually not uh, you know like a shiny metallic metal like you'd normally find in a lot of bayonets. It's actually got more of a brush steel um, or you know maybe just a gray uh, type finish to it, which is again a little bit unusual. I haven't ever seen that before on a bayonet, but uh, it's definitely pretty cool. It looks really cool on the rifle, which I'll show you here in a second. It does have the serrated edges in here in the back. It's got the built-in wire cutter feature that works along with the scabbard that many AKs have. It's got a really nice finish and edge to it. Uh, it's not razor sharp, but uh, I don't think they intend that to be the case with these uh, straight from the manufacturer. So. Uh, the scabbard itself is a uh, pretty nice design as well. Like I mentioned, there isn't any serial numbers on the scabbard or the, the blade itself to identify that they're a matching set, but being these are modern and, and new make, that I don't think that's really an issue. Uh, these aren't military surplus or anything. So, uh, But overall, pretty nice, um, pretty nice scabbard, nothing uh, fancy. It's got this kind of frog on the end here to hang off your belt loop and hold it in place. Uh, but overall, pretty pretty nice. Uh, again, the reason I purchased this was so I could put it on my Bulgarian SLR 101S, and it does fit really nice on there, and I'll show that to you here, guys. Uh, these things actually just go in over the muzzle brake, and uh, you have to make sure you line it up with your bayonet lug, and if you loosen it there, you heard the click, that's actually it locking into the bayonet lug itself, which means that you have a, a positive fit on there. And that, that was kind of the hard part with a lot of the other bayonets, is it wasn't, it wasn't locking on there. But overall, it looks really cool. Um, as you can see, it's got a real nice uh, black finish to it, which matches the, the rifle itself. Uh, it's a little bit loose up here on the, the muzzle brake, but that's okay. As long as it's you know, a tight fit and it's locked into place, that shouldn't be an issue. But overall, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, looks like it's going to be a pretty, pretty cool addition to this rifle. Uh, to remove it, we'll just go ahead and push in the button on the right hand side of the bayonet here and that should remove it and unlock it. You'll notice one thing with the uh, DSLR 101S is uh, when you do that, uh, put on bayonets or take them off, it does take the finish off the bayonet lug which isn't uncommon for any type of bayonet lug. You're, you're putting metal against metal there so it's going to probably take the finish off. Not a huge deal. That shouldn't affect the value of the rifle at all. Uh, but that, that's pretty much it guys. Uh, for 90 bucks it was like I said, an investment, but they're becoming harder to find and more rare, so you never know. You might end up uh, you know, making a little bit of money off that in 5-10 years down the line when you're not able to find these and someone is looking for it. So 
uh, but it's going to be an addition to my rifle. I'll probably end up selling it with the rifle if I ever sell the rifle, which is probably unlikely. But uh, that's pretty much it, guys. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Otherwise, as always, I appreciate you watching, and until next time, take it easy.